Welcome to a lecture on mental illness. This one's a little different, and you may think to yourself, well, mental illness is different than physical illness. This seems, you know, not part of this course. It's more psychology versus biology, but I think if you uh, listen and you think about it, uh, perfectly appropriate to talk about this. I mean, your behavior, your, your mood is uh, a product of your brain, your brain chemistry. And we'll see how diseases uh, can impact uh, your mood and mood can impact uh, disease as well, your physical well-being. So uh, good stuff and important things right here. So <clears throat> mental illness, mental disorders can affect your behavior, what you, how you act, your emotion, how you feel, and your cognition your thinking process. And mental illness can be uh, something where it's um, occasional depression to severe disabling life-threatening situations. Um, I think you're aware of that. And mental illness is often amenable uh, to treatment. There's uh, um, drugs and therapies and uh, different things that, uh, that will affect mental illness. Now the, <clears throat> the Bible for this is this uh, um, the DSM, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. So it's what health, uh, health professionals uh, go to to define different mental illnesses. And uh, um, yeah. So yes, bi-directional relationship here between uh, uh, mental disorders and um, other physical disorders. So put a link to a paper there. You can look at relationship between coronary art heart disease and mental disorders, but <clears throat> if your hormones are off in the endocrine system, it's gonna affect your mood and your moods can affect the amount of hormones given off, stress hormones, things like that. So uh, definitely goes back and forth. So avoid this false uh, dichotomy that mental illness <clears throat> is completely separate from uh, physical illness. So yeah, when you look at the nature of, of illness, you can look at it in a biopsychosocial model where we look at biological um, determinants and variables of, of illness. That's what we've been doing a lot of, but psychological as well and social factors. So all these things going into it. And uh, you talk about being predisposing, um, meaning uh, um, it, it goes both ways, but uh, uh, it puts the, the risk, uh, certain moods and behaviors put the patient at risk for certain physical diseases, perpetuating or exacerbating the issue, right? And, uh, or protective that certain behaviors and uh, moods um, will help you uh, prevent relapsing on a disease or uh, decrease its severity. Definitely, all related. So the healthcare specialists that are specialized in this, uh, psychiatrists are uh, doc uh, doctors, uh, study psychiatry, they can prescribe medications, um, indeed. And then psychologists don't have a medical degree, they have a psychology degree. And they look at uh, behaviors and uh, they're specialists in testing uh, for um, 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 diff different issues. Uh, yeah, and you can see they, uh, they do overlap, but they are different professionals. And social workers, they look at more the, uh, the environment, looking at the family and uh, the person's uh, situation socially and uh, uh, physically. So these are the healthcare specialists in this, but all nurses, doctors, everyone uh, needs to be uh, well aware of uh, mental illness. Now talk about the serious uh, problems, the most frequent and serious problems. Uh, we look at disabling disorders, uh, physical and mental, of the top 15, four are, are, are mental illnesses. So it's clearly important. And then suicide is when you look worldwide uh, in terms of violent death, you think, oh, it's murder, it's war, it's suicide uh, more than homicide. Yeah. All right, so the first uh, most frequent, certainly most frequent disease is looking at depressive bipolar disorders. So bipolar means you're both depressed and manic. You go back and forth. And major depress, depressive means d depression. Problem affecting, I bet some of you out there, and everyone, all these mental illnesses and disorders 
people can feel at times, it becomes a mental illness when it's, when it's overwhelming or, 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 or it happens for a long period of time. So you can be depressed over a death, things like that. But major depressive disorder affects people's lives. We're talking about uh, affects their job, their relationships, et cetera, of course. Anxiety disorders, very common, very, very common. Uh, and these, again, some, some, most of these things you guys are familiar with. Uh, panic disorder that can come on all of a sudden and uh, cause someone to freeze in their tracks. Just anxiety generalized. PTSD, of course, obsessive compulsive disorder, do the same thing or wash your hands quite a bit, and social phobias. We'll talk about phobias or fears. Uh, schizophrenia, it's a splitting of the mind and uh, serious disease. Uh, it affects uh, quite a few people. And then substance abuse disorders, of course, alcohol being number one, but many, many other substances. It's a mental illness <clears throat> that um, uh, causes huge toll on society. Personality disorders, talk about borderline personality and uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of different personality disorders. And then uh, two eating disorders, anorexia nervosa is when you uh, starve yourself and you have a body image of yourself just always seeming too fat and uh, usually uh, young women. And this mental illness causes a tremendous physical uh, uh, destruction on the body and it's actually fatal at like 10, 20 percent, even with help. So, you know, we talk about, oh, it's just a mental illness is no big deal. Not true. And bulimia is when you, uh, you do eat, you, but then you purge, you usually throw up and um, um, it's, um, it's not lesser than anorexia, but anorexia, again, is uh, pretty deadly. And then we'll talk about sleep disorders. Um, sleep apnea, babies sometimes have this where they stop breathing at the night, but we're gonna talk about obstructive in adults when uh, you end up waking up and uh, <clears throat> all during the night where you kind of wake yourself up, you stop breathing and uh, you never get a rest of sleep. So you're depressed and lethargic all day. Then rest, restless leg syndrome and uh, limb movement disorders where you feel like you can't sit still or you're kicking, things like that, yeah. And then insomnia, this inability to sleep is a common symptom of, of, of many, many disorders and it can be just on its own manifestation. Yeah, and so many uh, medical disorders have psychiatric symptoms. So when you look at a, a patient that has mental illness, you wanna do a physical too to see if there's a cause, a, a physical cause you can pinpoint and then it makes it easy that you can, you can go at that cause and, and hopefully that affects the, the mental illness. So hypothyroidism, your underactive thyroid is gonna cause, often most people are depressed and they gain weight and they're lethargic and they're cold and they're depressed. And so here's a, a, a biological cause that, that can be fixed you know, pretty easily with uh, replacement hormone therapy. Yep. So when you do a psychiatric exam, you want to do a full medical assessment to, to take a look and, and see uh, if there is something they can, you can get, get your fingers on it and, and work on that. Suicide, of course, I mentioned, look at that. It's like the highest cause of violent death in the world. Um, and it can be uh, brought on, you know, many things. And sometimes there's just, you don't know. Uh, uh, a cause of a suicide and uh, there's no note there's no warning signs ahead of time but you guys I think it's 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 well publicized uh, uh, you should take people seriously and uh, make sure that there's there's help out there for them but people have uh, illnesses especially chronic illnesses involving pain you can see how you'd want to just not want to keep living with this kind of pain and substance abuse goes really strongly with um, suicide and Substance abuse, you get feelings of um, feeling worthless, and then when you when you when you fail, then you, you just it's just this, this cycle, and uh, can cause suicidal thoughts, and of course psychiatric psychiatric disorders, uh, many of them. So psychiatric emergencies, uh, delirium. If you're delirious, you have this sudden change. It could be due to a toxin. It could be something mental chemistry that um, you're you're delirious and you need uh, to be. Uh, you can't be let just run around. You could harm others or yourself. 
uh, alcohol and, and, and uh, sedative withdrawals, of course. Withdrawal symptoms can be uh, um, deadly. Uh, mania, person is just manic. We'll talk more about that. And when you see psychosis, psychosis is when you're disconnected from reality. You're going to see you're going to have uh, hallucinations and uh, um, things that are, are are not there, but you think that they're there. And psychosis, of course, all these things are emergencies that need you to be uh, have medical help. And uh, panic attacks, you know, panic attacks come on people, and uh, they feel they get symptoms like uh, heart racing, not being able to breathe, and so they'll present at the emergency room. And uh, after looking at ECG, things like that, it may come to the uh, conclusion that you have panic attacks and see how you can um, um, deal with those. All right, symptoms, signs, and tests. So you're going to see a lot of these symptoms when you hear uh, you're depressed or um, lack initiative. All these things on their own do not mean you have a mental illness. So that's what I mean by, by nonspecific and in isolation, these things, all of us experience these, but it becomes a mental illness when it becomes a, a burden and affects your life uh, in a bigger way. So physical examination, uh, look at blood levels, see are your hormones, things like that. Uh, is something that just uh, needs to be done. Oh yeah, you can do an MRIs, uh, electroencephalogram, uh, testing, hormonal studies, definitely. So a full psychiatric evaluation needs to, <clears throat> to get all this information to uh, have a complete picture. In a mental status evaluation, you want to see, do they know what year it is? Do they know who they are, where they're at, right? <clears throat> you can take a look and test for memory, short-term and long-term memory, intellectual functions, their judgment, their mood, um, speech pattern, and uh, uh, delusions, hallucinations, things that are not there, but they think that they're there. Uh, yeah. There is this uh, PHQ-9 form. I've seen forms of this, I think, when uh, going for a checkup or going to a new doctor, things like that. Um, yeah. So it's a standard questionnaire. Do, do, do you uh, have little interest in doing things, poor appetite, uh, trouble concentrating, thoughts you might want to hurt yourself? All these things uh, um, are a good screening tool that can put up some red flags that uh, you want to delve further, definitely. Yeah, take a look at this. I broke up this table so we can we can look at it all at once. Definitely. So manifestations of psychiatric illnesses. Yeah. Uh, confusion. Euphoria at inappropriate times. Right. Feeling good. <clears throat> Depression. Uh, that's 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 overwhelming. Anxiety. This feeling of apprehension. Definitely. Uh, compulsion. You just can't help yourself to perform an act. You don't have a. The mental, uh, uh, sometimes you lose the ability to make good decisions, and that's you know, very can be very harmful to a person's life, right? Hyperactivity or hypoactivity. Right? Disorganization, and um, you'll see some people manic that that's just, the words come out, but they don't make much sense. Um, yeah. And delusion, false beliefs that you are, Presented with whatever logic, you still just uh, have this delusion that it's true, even though it's not, and no one else believes it's true. Yeah. Hypochondria, the idea that you feel uh, you're you're sick, you you're always people are hypochondriacs. They 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 always have symptoms, and they can be psychosomatic, where you, you come up with them, and they're very real, and you can even influence them and make them happen. Obsessions, just recurrent thoughts and feelings. Yeah. And then phobias, these exaggerated fears of things that you maybe shouldn't be afraid of. Uh, leaving the house, uh, spiders, lightning. Uh, you're probably saying spiders kill. <laughs> I, the, you, a phobia goes beyond that, right? Uh, uh, yes. And then suicidal, homicidal thoughts as well. Disturbance of perception, so hallucinations. So perceptions that are not real. It's not real, but they're in your mind, they're real. And illusions, false perceptions of real stimuli. So it may just be a dog, but you see it as this dire wolf or something like that. Yeah. And uh, cognition, so amnesia, just uh, losing memory. Aphasia means that you're not uh, able to speak or comprehend uh, language. Yeah. And dementia is when you lose this ability, intellectual ability, um, 
usually related to old age, but could be other things. All right, so lots of psychiatric manifestations. We talk about them. I think most of you are familiar with all these terms, but just kind of go over it so get them in your mind. All right, let's talk about some specific diseases. All right, so um, when you look at mental illness, uh, I, uh, several factors. One of them is intelligence. And so when you have a lack of intelligence early on in development, it's an intellectual disability, but after that, it's a dementia. Okay. Um, whether there's brain lesions or not, um, and whether you can interpret reality um, correctly. Are you hallucinating or having delusions? And this condition, is it uh, uh, episodic? It comes and it goes. You have periods of intense depression where you don't get out of bed, and then all of a sudden you feel okay in between? Or is it consistent? Is it something that's chronic a long period of time, or does it come on quickly like a panic attack, something that's acute? So again, here's the uh, um, Diagnostic <clears throat> and a Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the book points you to there as the most widely accepted system for uh, defining these terms in terms of writing reports and, and getting people help. All right, so you need to judge whether the patient is psychotic. Um, uh, and you do this, this is something you can't measure with instruments or a stethoscope, these are by talking to someone, right? And you can look for altered perceptions or illogical beliefs, these delusions that Illusions of grandeur, all kinds of things that they think are real, but they're not. Um, yep. <clears throat> yep, so mood disorders or schizophrenia, talk about both those. And then you need to look, of course, there are drugs that uh, can elicit psychotic behavior. Uh, definitely uh, crystal meth and uh, bath salts, things like that, are famously uh, uh, cause uh, psychotic breaks. And then there could be a brain tumor or something in the chemistry that's, a, that's causing this. So, depressive bipolar disorders. So this is alterations of your mood. And if you're depression, depressed, I think you all realize what that means, sad, melancholy, you don't uh, feel like uh, doing anything, you don't eat very well, prolonged sadness that's life affecting. And then mania is going to be a hyperactive state. And sometimes, I mean, you're euphoric, happy. Sometimes you're easily set off or triggered. You know, I'll you know, talk some more about it. So that's that, that manic and depressive, sometimes they, they, they alternate like that. And major depressive is the depressive without the manic and bipolar is gonna go back and forth. Yeah. So, you know, how, how are you, how do you know if you're not just, depressed from time to time, or if you have a uh, mental illness with depression, right? Well, you know, they, the, the manual just lays out some, some guidelines. Let's see, at least five of these depression symptoms, at least two weeks. Yeah, for at least two weeks. And these people usually have multiple major depressive episodes that come on. And there's between, they may be slightly depressed, but there's these just periods where you just don't want to get out of bed and uh, really harms your life. So yeah, talk about lack of enjoyment, things that used to bring you joy, you just don't feel like doing anymore. And <clears throat> sleep is almost always, and appetite is almost always disturbed as well. You may think about suicide, not be able to concentrate, feel worthless. And uh, manic is this excited, irritable mood when, you, when you're up. Um, yep, lasts at least one week and causing functional impairment it means it's great to be always happy, you know, but this is something that is impairing your life. It's causing issues. And as you can see, people tend to, here's a shorter depressive and manic episode, and here's more, more one that's drawn out, but they often are episodic like this. And so people like this should get help and drugs and to, to, to stabilize this if they want to, to lead a more normal life. So manic, yes, what you see often is, um, yeah, you'll see people that have this gambling or uh, hypersexuality, doing risky behaviors is very common in this, and uh, not sleeping and just not being disorganized and, and things coming out, uh, just kind of being blurted out. And not only happy, the irritability too, just uh, being really kind of hyped up. I'm using all these words, I think you understand my, um, um, what I'm saying here, yep. You know, distracted, racing thoughts, 
excessive involvement in pleasurable activities. And uh, <clears throat> these major, uh, major uh, episodes, you could have hallucinations and paranoid means that you, uh, you think people are out to get you or, or, or you have thoughts that are, are not substantiated and, and people will try to reason with you, but you just, you just cling on to the, these feelings. And um, uh, yeah, somatic delusions, the idea that they have, uh, somatic means body. So having a physical defect when they, in fact they don't, religious or grandiose, you think you're Superman, something like that, yeah. And I like this drawing here, you can see in reality is here. And then this is the, the mind of someone that's uh, having hallucinations and there's no talking them into, um, into, your, into the reality if that's what's going on in their head. So yes, a psychotic is uh, distorting your perceptions and your thoughts from reality. So depression, um, <clears throat> you know, what causes it? Uh, I mean, you think brain chemistry, it's something that's, it's an eminence of your brain is where all of your thought and mood comes from. So it's your brain. But then there's also thought looking at the body brain access, the gut brain access with, with hormones produced there. And so uh, there's some research looking at the gut bacteria and mood. Uh, but genetics, you'll see that things like bipolar are highly uh, run in families. Um, and then they can look at uh, different parts of the brain and see activities in the brain, uh, definitely brain chemistry. And this neuroplasticity, the, the ability to make connections, it's um, uh, found to differ in those that have depression versus not. So yeah, you look at genetics, chemistry, drugs can cause it, stress it can be a physical issue. So bipolar, you can see seven times more likely if you have a, a close relative with, uh, with bipolar, that's how more likely you are to have it. So looking at 4% of people, we're talking about 12 million people with this bipolar disorder. And suicide can be uh, uh, much more common in them than the general population, of course. But even though it's uh, genetic, there's no specific gene that's been identified that's the bipolar gene, something like that. Um, this is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. So looking at glandular issues. Um, yeah, and sleep uh, disturbance and is uh, uh, definitely always a big part of this. Um, you know, you, you guys want to get into it some more, you get into this, you can, you can look at uh, uh, some changes in the brain and differences in the brains between uh, bipolar and depressive people and uh, the average person. What about treatments for, um, for this? Well, a lot of medication, Prozac, lithium, <clears throat> a lot of medications out there to, uh, to, that are, will change your mood. And people respond differently to different levels and different medications, and they help some people for sure. And psychotherapy, of course, uh, talking, uh, going through um, uh, recommendations by therapists uh, to, to help change your, your mood. Uh, phototherapy, if the, uh, it's a seasonal affective disorder, people get depressed with uh, shorter day lengths here in Maine in winter. And so you can have lights that sometimes <clears throat> will definitely affect your, your hormones and your mood. Yep. Exercise, turns out, is uh, very good for depression. And it's electroconvulsive therapy. I, I saw this in the book. I'm like, yeah, we don't still zap people in the head, do we? Uh, well, yeah. Um, turns out you can, uh, you can, <laughs> you can do this uh, therapy and it changes your... Uh, brain chemistry in some people. So it's not, uh, they're not doing a lobotomy or, or any uh, shock therapies that were done back in the, the 40s and 50s, but um, they do the electrotherapy. <clears throat> uh, so yes, uh, mood stabilizers, you want to bring down the highs and bring up the lows would be ideal if you are a person with bipolar and you wanna live a more normal life. Um, definitely look at, look at sleep. All right. Now, anxiety, OCD, PTSD, these kind of things are anxiety disorders where you have, it's fine to be anxious, to be overly anxious at times when you don't need to be that anxious. And this can be life-changing if you have uh, anxiety disorders and panic attacks, of course, or generalized anxieties or phobias. It can obviously limit your happiness in your life. So yes, insomnia, compulsiveness, 
exaggerate or inappropriate feelings of tension and nervousness, this anxiety that you don't, you don't need to have. It's good to be anxious if there's a, a bear comes into your campsite, you should, fight or flight should be, you know, at a, at a hundred then, but you know, this is talking about in normal life circumstances. All right, so looking at different types, uh, panic disorder, yep, uh, generalized anxiety. We'll talk about these, obsessive compulsive, we'll talk about all of these. So again, everyone has anxiety at some points. It is perfectly normal. And you may see this with uh, other mental illnesses, anxiety is part of it, of course. Yeah, definitely, yep. And <clears throat> you can tell the patient, and it's not like a delusion or something, they, they're aware that, uh, they, they, that it's not rational to be so anxious. They're aware of it, but they still, they can't help it. Of course, you can't just yell at them like, stop it, and that's not gonna help, you know? They, they realize they, they, they're overreacting, but uh, they can't change it. But generally, they, so yeah, they, they understand reality. It's not a psychosis. They know reality, exactly, yep, yep. Yep. All right, so phobias, these are fears. Um, <clears throat> and I guess phobias are irrational fears. I mean, you should fear um, being uh, run over if you cross the street with your eyes closed. You, you should fear lightning if you're carrying a metal rod at a light at a rainstorm. I mean, there are there are fears, but irrational fears, uh, things like claustrophobia, where it's a, you're in an enclosed space, and even if you're safe, there's no need to become, uh, you know, to be to be so anxious and have your heart race and and uh, have real issues like that. Uh, blood is common. You can see, you look at it, uh, things like fear of water, natural environment, animals like snakes, of course, uh, and then uh, situations like uh, being in crowds or leaving your house or being in small spaces, and uh, fear of the blood or, or needles. <clears throat> These are some common phobias. And there's a phobia of almost, of almost anything. And, and how they begin is, is interesting and not completely understood. So panic attacks are short-lived on <clears throat> unplanable events, right? When you're really, you have this attack, you're super anxious and um, yeah, and your in inability to, 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 uh, to function properly in that situation. Obsessive compulsive disorder. And these are people that have uh, compulsions or repetitive thoughts. They need to go and touch the door each time. They will count constantly. They'll wash their hands constantly till they're <clears throat> red and, and, and chapped hands. So if you see that kind of a symptom, um, you can ask, how often do you wash your hands? And they like, yeah, well, 10 times, 50 times a day. And that, you know, that's, a, that's a kind of thing. So, <clears throat> and you'll see this also in uh, pacing. Even in, in animals, you'll see this, that are, that are kept, they will do this stereotypical behavior again and again and again. Um, yeah. So you can see an obsessive thought and you get anxious about it. So you do a behavior, you feel okay, but then it goes round and round. Um, so therapy, medications, everything to help you live a life without having to do these stereotypical behaviors constantly. Yeah, acute stress and uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so obviously uh, acute stress or having uh, this post-traumatic means there was some traumatic issue that um, uh, will cause you from that point forward to have these attacks, these panic attacks. And yeah, severity and type of trauma, the more severe the trauma, often the greater this PTSD, of course. And causes uh, men and women rape, number one. It's just such a traumatic um, event that can cause PTSD. And in men, uh, often they're put into uh, combat situations. And, and, and of course, you know, being, a, being in a situation uh, can cause uh, uh, be very traumatic to see people killed or friends killed or to be so scared because, you, you know, being in that situation, right? Uh, childhood neglect, physical abuse, women rape, sexual molestation, attack, or threatened. So this, this, uh, this event uh, is gonna be the trigger for post-traumatic stress disorder, which could be debilitating. And if you have it, I hope uh, you get help and uh, to help manage it.
with uh, medications, uh, definitely, and psychotherapy. All right, schizophrenia is a serious behavior. Um, it's uh, your you become untethered to reality. Uh, you, you have delusions, these beliefs that you are sure of that are not real, they're not true. And these hallucinations where you are seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling things that don't really exist. Your mind is making that up. And of course they're real because in your mind, if you trigger those, those regions, you're gonna, those are sensation areas where you, it's the same as the real sensation, but instead of being coming through your, your senses, they're just being triggered within your mind. So they're absolutely as real as anything you can see, just to put yourself in the, the shoes of someone with a mental illness like that. So yeah, psychosis, a real break from reality, these delusions, these hallucinations, and that's what schizophrenics uh, deal with. Yeah, and so you'll see, uh, yeah, look at that children. So you see on this end, this flat effect, this kind of no emotion at all. Um, and then they don't, they don't say much and, or they're disorganized, yeah. And then they'll have periods of this bizarre behavior, delusions, hallucinations. Yeah, yeah. So inappropriate emotional responses. And then aggressive on one hand or withdrawn or ambivalent. So these big alterations in mood of the schizophrenic, either side. And when we speak about this, we talk about positive and negative symptoms, and I wasn't sure what that is, but positive symptoms mean things that are, that are, that are added. So uh, delusions, hallucinations are not real, you're adding them. Uh, negative uh, symptoms are, are, are not present. You should have feelings that you should feel, but you don't. Um, so no initiative and um, this kind of flattened effect, not having appear apparently any kind of emotions you know. and cognitive uh, symptoms always means your thinking your thought process your memory so we don't know the cause um, <clears throat> there appears to be a genetic uh, basis to it because it'll you'd be more likely to have it if a relative does but again probably multi uh, genes and uh, um, environmental inf influences uh, early on they looked at uh, even in, I think, embryonic, in the fetal stage of uh, starvation, infections, and uh, possibly some things happened uh, even in, in the fetal condition, yeah. Yeah. So schizophrenia, usually it comes about uh, in, in not as a kid, but in late adolescence or adulthood, and uh, you can have severe schizophrenics or schizophrenics at the other end of the spectrum for sure. When you hear prodrome or prodromal, it means early course was coming on, like a migraine on prodromal. And you start to see things before the, the big stuff comes on, right? So prodrome, that's what that means. And uh, yeah, so depression, anxiety, uh, social, social withdrawal, some of the symptoms, if you see that in an adolescence, uh, it could be uh, the first signs of schizophrenia. And then when you're in schizophrenia, psychosis and, and, and real issues. And again, people, they vary quite a bit, highly variable, how schizophrenic, how, how big of an effect it has on you personally. Um, but <clears throat> medications are first line important thing, antipsychotics. Um, and again, these medications, we're talking about all these medications for mental illness. Adherence is a problem with patients too, because they may affect your mood and, uh, people may not like that and, and, and not take their psychotic meds. But you guys are familiar with these kind of things, but I thought I'd bring that up. Yep, yep. and looking at the whole family and, and uh, um, uh, we're looking at sch schizophrenia, you wanna get just um, uh, help to understand it and uh, try to have the person live a normal life as possible, but severe schizophrenics need to be institutionalized. All right, substance abuse addictive disorders. These obviously very common, um, uh, looking at alcohol, tobacco, and, and, and illicit drugs. And you see this when you have a substance or addictive, you see a lot of other psychotic disorders. So if you are schizophrenic and you are, have a, a, a bipolar, you're more likely to have these addictive uh, disorders and substance abuse. So they go hand in hand, back and forth. You often see this. At a hospital, uh, do you tell me a big... Uh, big area, big as the 
uh, be the behavioral health unit. And so there's people there that have all kinds of mental illnesses that along with other comorbidities and um, uh, it's, uh, yeah, so it's a, a big part of hospital care is mental health issues and even policing too. <clears throat> working uh, mental health is the social workers have a part in it too, but it's uh, yeah. All right. So uh, medical burden to society in terms of uh, addiction and uh, disability because of this. So alcohol is a big one in terms of uh, um, uh, substances that are abuse, uh, alcoholics. And if you look at some of the cost of these things, tobacco addiction, almost a half a million people a year die because of smoking related illnesses. We talked about uh, lung cancer and COPD, right? And alcoholic related uh, deaths are less, but still a huge, at the hospital, alcohol is involved, uh, uh, stomach cancers and, and ulcers and uh, all kinds of diseases uh, because of uh, addictive behaviors. And of course, stimulants, op op opioids, uh, hypnotics, uh, hallucinogens, inhalants, like uh, um, people will buy uh, compressed air or whipped cream or paint, things that have other horrible effects, uh, air fresheners, horrible effects on your mind, but they give them that high and they can be addicted to it and uh, it's legally available. So uh, these things. Uh, and cannabis too, people say, oh, it's just pot. Well, um, uh, if you, uh, you smoke pot every day, uh, it's you have an addiction problem. You say that's not addictive. Well, it's a, it's it's uh, it's not going to not affect your life. You know, people will argue with me on this. <clears throat> so, um, yes. So difficulty, uh, yeah, controlling it. So if you have cravings, and uh, you you got you have to have it. We talk about withdrawal is serious cravings where you actually go through. DTs, you go through uh, physical effects that can be horrible because your mind, your brain chemistry has changed because of this drug and uh, removing it is going to be, uh, cause your brain to be very unhappy. It's not going to release that, that, uh, those good chemicals because you release that uh, uh, substance that was releasing that, like nicotine even. Yeah. Increased tolerance. You need more and more of a drug to, uh, to have the same effect because you're changing the receptors in your brain, yeah. And using it despite the danger, you know, physically and legally and socially, your your, your uh, relationships, etc. So you you just can't stop. So you guys are familiar with this. So treatments uh, definitely. There's all kinds of treatment centers and places you can go if you have a severe addiction or substance related problem. And then of course there's meetings, uh, AA and Narcotics Anonymous, and all these meetings that are not that are free and and and, and, and outpatient too. So yeah, psychosocial interventions, and there are medications uh, for alcohol, well, for mainly for um, uh, symptoms of withdrawal with alcohol, but opioids, uh, Suboxone and Methadone. You guys have, have heard of these. These are things that uh, will bind with opiate receptors and, and, uh, and some bind. And then if you, if you do, you know, crack or other opiates, it doesn't have an effect. So you've wasted your money because it blocks those receptors. And so some of these give a methadone, these can be abused too. People sell these and it gives you a sort of a little high. And, uh, and so the idea, there's some controversy about weaning people off using these and that you should use it to help wean people off heroin, things like that and, and, and crack everything else. But, um, it should, after two years of, of taking it, there should be some tapering. In some, um, some cases, people are just on this and uh, um, it, has, it does have effects. So anyway, all kinds of things we could talk about. We just don't have time. All right, personality disorders. So what about you? Do you have a personality disorder? Do I? I, I don't know, I, I possibly. Um, but these are, of course, maladaptive traits about your personality that maladaptive mean there's some negative impacts of having this kind of a personality. How's that? Inflexible, per persuasive, this personality that you have, you, know, you just can't help yourself for being an ass, you know, or uh, it's, it's your personality, uh, definitely. Um, and it's going to cause an issue, obviously, if you have this uh, alpha personality and it's not causing any issues because not people, it's not causing you loss of relationships or jobs. And it's not necessarily uh, causing a causing an issue, but this is cases where personality is uh, 
you would like to change it in order to have a better life overall. Yep, stable long duration. This is part of your personality. Uh, and, and of course you can, you, can, you can make changes in this, but uh, yeah. Yep. And you can read over this list. Interesting, huh? Yep. You can have a dependent personality. Histrionic means that you always over dramatize things. You just, and everyone can have a little bit of this, right? <laughs> You're saying to yourself, oh shit, I got a couple of these. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. I mean, you, people have personalities, you know, but, uh, uh, but you may see yourself fitting into some of these and maybe you want to think about, you know, making changes if you recognize things that would be helpful for yourself to be narcissistic, uh, definitely to, to Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yep, or you're overly paranoid or obsessive or antisocial. Um, yeah, and some of these, uh, they, they talked about this borderline, uh, uh, um, some of these uh, personality, they try to, traits try to tie it to criminality, things like that, and so, yeah. All right, neurodevelopmental disorders. So here, uh, you know, autism uh, is something that everyone is familiar with. And um, this is something that, uh, uh, that you, you note in a child as they develop, um, where they, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the symptoms there. And then uh, uh, atten attention de de deficit, I'm sorry, ADHD, uh, hyperactivity. Okay, and some of these, uh, controversial too because uh, maybe we're over prescribing and we we noticing it uh, too much and we try you know and it's just children being children that kind of thing right right yeah yeah and uh, intellectual disabilities of course um, learning disabilities yeah and of course intellectual disability we talk about if it's early on we call it a intellectual disability so some things that can cause this of course Down syndrome you know chromosomal issue, uh, but uh, prenatal, neonatal, uh, things that are gonna be insults on the brain, uh, metabolic diseases and um, external agents. So there are diseases and toxic agents and uh, hypoxia or lack of oxygen, prenatally developmental things that happened. Remember the brain mostly develops during the first half of pregnancy and the second half lesions, things can happen to it and going on early childhood too. Uh, depression and anxiety, things that are found in childhood, usually not psychosis, uh, schizophrenia, bipolar. We see this in adolescents to adults, but in children we see anxiety disorder, definitely. And, and, uh, yeah. So autism, we hear talk about the spectrum. So yeah, you're not autistic or not. There's, there's a, uh, what you notice in, in, in children with this is that um, they, they have their social interaction is different. They, they don't make eye contact. They seem withdrawn. They don't talk as much. And so you might notice this in a child and, 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 and take a look and um, get them checked out to see what a professional thinks, you know, so you can get them the best uh, help that, that you can. So usually before three years old, social interactions and communication are really an issue. They may have perfectly high cognitive skills, but they, they, they don't interact with people. They don't have empathy they, and, and they don't, um, they might not hug. And there's things that uh, are, of course, very disturbing for our parents. And um, um, it can be like along this whole spectrum too. Yeah, you may see repetitive patterns, you know, kind of a um, OCD kind of a, a feel to it. Yeah. And again, there's high functioning autism and then there's severe autism where they're, they're nonverbal and they just constantly rock and make emotions. So on either end. On the high functioning, uh, Asperger syndrome uh, is uh, you'll see sometimes incredibly intelligent, but just really bad social, so the social skills. And uh, uh, yeah, and so um, uh, indeed, and it's hard, you can't put a number on it, how you define it exactly, but it's uh, on the autism spectrum where there's definitely issues with, with socializing, but uh, the cognitive ability is there or can be extremely intelligent, yeah. Let's take a look. Yeah, they don't like a lot of sensation. You'll see this, which is a child, uh, definitely. Don't wanna be uh, touched, yeah. And then uh, this extreme focus on something at the detriment of other things. Yes, yes, definitely. 
they, they like a uh, normal uh, pattern, not they don't like change. They yeah, not empathetic. So it's uh, yeah, not able to feel that empathy. Yeah, and then sometimes repetitive behaviors. Yeah. So ADHD, uh, attention deficit and hyperactivity. The idea kid in school just can't sit down like the other kids is always you know mind is wandering doing a hundred things like this and uh if it's influencing their their cognition their learning then it's it's something that uh, should be looked at and possibly you know medicated or therapy to to to, to help with that so um yeah sometimes hyperactivity includes impulsivity uh and sometimes um Yes, just doing things without thinking, and it can be a uh, nightmare for a parent. And uh, again, Ritalin, you've, you've heard some of the, um, um, some of the, the backlash against over-medicating uh, children with some things like this. That, uh, so again, I, I can see, you know, wanting to uh, take a look at this from, from both directions. Yeah, learning disorders. Um, a defiant disorder, yeah, when you have a, a kid that does not respect authority and it can be, you know, all these things. I don't have any kids. So I, these things all seem like a nightmare to have to deal with. I have lots of friends with kids, of course, yeah, yeah. Substance abuse disorders, you know, even uh, growing up, you'll have absolutely kids before their teens even uh, finding alcohol and marijuana these days. Um, and then conduct disorder, just really disruptive and violent and not, not wanting to follow rules. So all these things uh, um, are very concerning and uh, uh, should be looked at when in child and adolescence. All right, and I believe this is the last topic. Looking at mental disorders due to another medical condition. It's a mouthful, but that's pretty much it. Uh, when you find that there's a, a medical condition behind uh, uh, this mental illness. So definitely diseases of the brains. Uh, you have infection or tumors can cause mental illness and severe personality changes. Um, and definitely hormonal changes. Hypothyroidism, remember, can cause a depression for sure. Um, and then it can be, of course, drugs or toxins can, can cause mental illness as well. So always when you wanna do a psychiatric uh, diagnosis of a person, you wanna keep open the possibility that it's not uh, a mental illness without um, a biological cause that can can be looked at. Look at toxins or uh, hormonal issues. Uh, the, the child may have too much testosterone causing aggression, things like that. So uh, these things are, are related. You want to do a full uh, workup. You don't want to simply look from the DSM manual. The, the, just look at from the psychiatric perspective. You want to look at from the full perspective, bio, psycho, social. Uh, acute changes in mental status means rapidly change in mental status. Uh, someone that just is like a light switch, or, or maybe not quite that quick, but pretty quick like that. Um, so you wanna look at what could be causing that. Uh, you'll see that during a uh, um, withdrawal of, uh, uh, from, from um, people withdrawing from opiates and alcohol withdrawal. <clears throat> yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be uh, real quick with the emotions. They'll, they'll let you know they're unhappy. Um, yeah, and it could be rare cases of disturbance of electrolytes uh, or inf uh, infections cause uh, these uh, changes in mental status. Strange, but true. Chronic changes, of course, you see this with people with dementia and with people with Alzheimer's, besides losing the ability to, to, to speak, et cetera, also can become very irritable and they can uh, be violent, things like that. So with dementia, um, you can see real changes in, in mental status as the brain uh, changes, personality changes, even psychosis and moods. Yeah. All right, yeah, well, lastly, the somatic symptom disorders. Okay, these are just a cluster of very interesting things where the symptoms of this disease, somatic means, you know, fever, chills, hives, uh, uh, cough, headache, nausea, these kind of symptoms of your body, um, people really will focus on them and they will have uh, a lot of emotional distress about these symptoms. And those of you, I'm uh, mostly nursing uh, people I'm talking to, this is something uh, you're definitely gonna deal with. So 
Somatic symptom disorder is when they really focus on these symptoms and it's pain and people are so subjective with pain. It's, uh, uh, some can, oh, my leg's cut off. Well, I don't need, I'm okay. And others are, you know, a slight cut and they're just, uh, they're not gonna live. And, and so people will really uh, focus on these, 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 these symptoms and think that they're life-threatening, but they're not, yeah. Illness anxiety disorder, as it sounds, you just have this anxiety. Maybe you read about an illness and it's this rare thing, and you just you feel like you're getting it. You know, you know, it's psychosomatic symptoms can even appear. Yeah, and factitious means you're deceiving, and uh, yeah, right. Um, it's when you purposely injure yourself. Well, then you're actually hurt, but or get sick, or you make up symptoms for. A reason that either benefits you, you're trying to collect insurance money, you pretend like you have whiplash, um, or people will do it just to get um, attention. So without any obvious uh, reward. So yeah, I'll talk a little more about that. Yeah, as an example of a fictitious disorder, this Munchausen, fascinating how there'll be people that often well-spoken intelligence that will just seek out medical attention. Um, and sometimes you can look at their childhood and, and how they were treated and if their, their, their parents were like this. But um, you will see them. Uh, um, so they, uh, the, the, the symptoms are, uh, they'll make up symptoms or cause harm, again, with no incentive. And malingering, we'll talk about, is that's when you purposely are trying to uh, get out of going to school or get out of the military or get an insurance ward. Um, so the, 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 uh, uh, the symptoms are uh, intentional. And there's Munchausen by proxy, where you actually cause a child to be sick or harm them just so you can get attention through your child getting attention. It's, yeah, so really interesting. All right, so when you hear about malingering, we're talking about, it's not a mental illness, but your person's going to be faking uh, uh, a disorder, right? The common reasons, attain money, get a disability check, uh, 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 drug shopping and definitely like, oh man, this pain, I have back pain. They'll choose pains that are hard to, again, pain is hard to, um, it's subjective. So you can say you're in pain and you can't tell me I'm not in pain, all right? And so if they want to get opiates, and so that's very common, This and they'll shop different doctors and things like that, right? Uh, evade criminal responsibility, avoid military service, bone spurs, and I make that up. It's been done, believe me. Um, yes, so uh, uh, these are things that uh, uh, malingering, when you hear that, uh, when you, you, it's tough because you want to take a patient seriously, but clues will come up and things will come up and their history will come up that um, uh, their symptoms may not be real. All right, but the people that are not, you know, doing it purposely. It's also called psychosomatic, where they actually have the symptoms and it's caused by, this is where the brain and the body are connected. And uh, some things that are not under uh, uh, your control, uh, generally vomiting, unless you make yourself vomit. Um, but uh, yeah, if you hear complaints that if they have a fever, you can't make yourself get a fever. I mean, easily, I mean, right away, right? You can get yourself sick, I guess, right? Um, yeah, it's great. Okay. So anyway, real interesting things. Do you think, think about, uh, you gotta keep these things in mind, dealing with the mind and symptoms. And there will be some nefarious people with seeking drugs and, and, and uh, getting uh, attention for other reasons. All right, All right so sleep-wake disorders. Um, sleep apnea, very common. Uh, they can give you a, a positive pressure device when you sleep. Uh, but it, what happens is that you, you, you wake up all during the night because you stop breathing. Usually your palate, the anatomy is bad. So you usually snore and then you stop breathing for a while. <laughs> start breathing again. So you wake up completely not rested at all. So uh, it causes depression and, and, and irritability. And so, yeah. And these other movements uh, uh, during, uh, uh, during sleep and there's sleepwalkers and narcolepsies when you fall asleep during the day. It's a weird one too. Yeah. And then bruxism when you grind your teeth in your sleep. I throw it in there too. So uh, insomnia and hypersomnia means you sleep all the time. Very common in depression. Uh, when you just don't want to get out of bed, you sleep way too much. Yeah. Yeah. And so these sleep difficulties, uh, you could look at uh, behavior and substances. Just 
again, it's they're all they're all connected. So you want to get a holistic picture of a person's life. And finally, um, it's, it's for these uh, sleep disorders, you can do sleep studies. There's whole clinics where you go. People there work overnights, obviously, and uh, the the patients come in and they hook you up to a. a blood oxygen, a breathing, an ECG, and a ECG, a heart, a head, temperature, breathing, and, uh, <clears throat> and then they can look at a readout of your sleep. And your sleep apnea, they'll see throughout the night, you keep waking up, your oxygen levels drop and come back up, and uh, your breathing will stop and start again. It could be a, a heart um, uh, palpitations can happen. All these things you can learn from this, this kind of a, um, a study, and so it'll help with a these sleep disorders, which are very common. Another thing, yeah, yeah. And as you age also, uh, sleep uh, becomes uh, more broken up. You know, grandpa gets up at five in the morning, gets up in the middle of the night to go pee, things like that. And just so your sleep, your REM sleep, um, as you get older, uh, it becomes a, a less regular. You, and you, you can have periods of insomnia, very common with aging. All right, so this is a different kind of lecture. Uh, talking about mental illness. But I think throughout, uh, you, you've made the connections between your physical self and your mental self. It's, you're all one. Your brain is part of your body. And uh, it's the chemistry and uh, the connections and insults to your brain, infections and, and toxic substances. It kind of affects mood and affects, um, we got to the real serious things like psycho psychosis and schizophrenia, hallucinations, delusions. These are things that are real in the person's mind um, because the mind can do that. Because really, what is real? I mean, what I'm seeing is a reflection of the light in the retina. And then I'm making in my mind, I've, I've made a construct in my head that this is a, this is a surface pro. And then uh, I'm blowing your mind now, right? Getting into the matrix. All right. So hope you enjoyed. Uh, touched on quite a few things, but just some, just definitely some general categories and some parts of mental illness that uh, you should always uh, be aware of. All right, see you guys.